Okay, so in Kubernetes, you're going to have a few different ways that you want to think about updates. Now, the first is going to be a blue-green. And then the next is going to be a canary deployment, okay? So let's talk about the difference between blue-green and canary. Blue-green, we're going to have two different environments, okay? So let's say we have environment one, and then we have environment two. And what's gonna happen with environment one is maybe it's running V1 of the application. Environment two is running V2, okay? So you essentially have these environments both running, both separate environments, but this environment is running the new version. This environment is running the old version, okay? So essentially what you do is you have both of these environments running and then you confirm and ensure that the new version of the application is running as expected. And then once you're good there and you figure that out, you then simply cut out the old version, okay? And then the new version is running. Now Canary is a little bit more of an advanced style deployment, I would say, okay? So in this instance, you have one environment, but you have V1 and V2 of the application running. So essentially what happens is like this. Let's say you have six customers, let me give everybody smiley faces because everybody's super happy to be running your software. <laughs> And then what happens is you have, oh, I put five there, not six. Hopefully I can do tech better than I can do math. So we have one subset of the users and then we have another subset of the users, okay? So what happens is this subset of the users are going to V2, they're going to the newest version of the application. This subset of users is going to the old version of the application, okay? So what essentially happens is like this. You're essentially traffic splitting. So you have some of your customers going to the old version, some of your customers going to the new version. And during this process, however long it's gonna be, you're essentially testing this piece here, okay? So you're testing to ensure, okay, is the V2 version of the application running as expected? Are there any performance issues? Are there any bugs? Are clients and customers saying anything negative about it? Because here's the reality. You can test from a QA perspective as much as you want, but the reality is, is that until you get it into the hands of customers, you're not really gonna have you know, a specific yes, no in terms of if everything is working as expected. That's why applications go out into production and there are bugs because you don't know until you know, regardless of how much you test. So the canary deployment, it's actually a really good method for testing in production, which isn't a bad thing, all right? So in Kubernetes, there's gonna be one primary way that you're gonna see, well, there are a few different ways, but there's gonna be one primary way that you're going to see when doing updates. So let's head over to VS Code and we're gonna see how that's done. Okay, so in Kubernetes, we have something called rolling updates. Now, what does that look like? Well, rolling updates is pretty much your canary deployments, okay? So let's say I have one deployment here and what this deployment is gonna do is this is gonna deploy four replicas of an Nginx application and this container image version is on 1.21 of Nginx. So let's go ahead and deploy this. Okay. So we do kubectl get deployments. Okay, kubectl get pods. Okay, so these are running as expected with the Nginx container image version 1.21. Now, what if we want to update it? Well, what we can do is we can do rolling updates. So this deployment, it's actually still using the deployment resource via the core API group. The biggest difference here is the strategy, right? So we have the rolling update piece here and it says, 
how many can be unavailable, and then the max surge, the replica count, and it's also going to showcase the latest container image version for Nginx. So what's going to happen here if we run this? Let me clear my screen here a bit, zoom in, and let's go ahead and run this configuration. Now if I run kubectl get pods, notice how there are five. And you can see two were just created. Okay, so we can see the old ones and then we can see the new ones. Now we can see more new ones, less old ones. Okay, and if we just keep running kubectl get pods, we can see the life cycle of this where the old one is now terminating and now all we have is the new version of the application running. So it goes through, it creates new and terminates old, confirms that everything is working as expected, and then you are left with the new version of the application running versus, you know, let's say you had to delete the old one, deploy the new one, you'd have to de uh, delete all the old ones, then you would have to deploy all new so you would have downtime. But in this instance, you do not have downtime. So that's the gist of a rolling update.